Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. All right, cool. What's up, Alex Warner? Not much, man. It's good doing? to see you. Absolutely. We, we haven't hung out in a while. Haven't had a good conversation in some time. Yeah, true. I, think I feel like I saw you a lot last year. Yeah, we. I did see you a lot last year. Last semester. Absolutely. More so. Hey, you know, also this semester while playing soccer as yeah. well. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, I was. Uh, I listened to the first probably like five minutes of, because you came over for episode number. It was eighteen. Oh and man. Like I was, I was listening to that. It's what are you crazy. at? One hundred three now. One hundred three. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's, it's crazy, like how uh, I don't know, just like the different way I went about it. And I just remember back then, I um, I felt like I was very aggressive with getting my like ideas across and things like that. And now my approach is more like, what can I learn from the other person? What can I achieve by like listening to them instead, like more so? Yeah, I feel you. that's an, that's an awesome mindset to have. Sure. I didn't feel that way that you were aggressive, but I mean that's that's your personal opinion about the way you went about it but hey I, I enjoyed it I personally think some of my answers lacked and uh, that's why I pushed to do this again because I, I want to provide some better answers and better exemplify myself on oh yeah the podcast so well, it's been about a year right? it has been about a year I, I do remember because I was like like at the at the time I was like just starting this thing up and I was like hey do you want to come over and do a podcast like did you even know what, what dude, it was we were or? actually no remember we were hanging out and then you mentioned it to me and then you're like let's do it and I was like dude all right yeah let's. hell yeah like, you texted me prior like just vaguely mentioning the fact and then I came over here and we were kicking it after the gym one day I think mm -hmm. and uh you're like hey you want to do it and I was like shit sure let's do it hey <laughs> yeah because it's literally like pretty much the first episode yeah Cause I, di I didn't really get started in this context until like episode I think it was like 14 actually okay Damn. It's wild. Yeah. wild. Maybe I should watch my language on this side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can say whatever. Yeah, cool. okay. okay. At least I, I don't care. It's, no, it's, yeah, I it's a personal thing. I, okay, I, would, I would rather not use vulgar language. It's, okay. it's habit. Well, I'm going to cuss all fun. That's okay, man. That's okay. Cool. So, well, actually, this is also the first time I've ever worn a hat on a podcast, so I'm kind of making history right now. Yeah, I uh, I was out of hair gel, so I threw one on, so you're not alone. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. Alternative. I've never thought about that. Alternative to... Yeah, I guess a lot of people do throw on hats whenever it's just like bad hair day or something. Or... Yeah, definitely. When your hair's terrible. Uh... I know. It's <laughs> awful. <laughs> I had a terrible hair day this morning and uh, no hat. So I went to school, shamed. See, ladies, guys have bad hair days, too. Eh, it's whatever. Yeah. I'm only there to learn, right? Yeah, true. <laughs> cool. So, you wanted to talk about personal identity? Sure. Let's do it. Should we hop into the topic? Broadly speaking, we got some questions lined up. Lead the way, man. Okay. I, I gave you some brief topics, and you just asked me what you'd like to know about them. Absolutely. And or my... Outlook on them. I'll go with the question that you kind of like sent over text. Most sure. well with that. So, what is the most important trait that makes your personality? See, I, I gave you these questions without thinking of a thorough answer. That way, I could come into this and give you an on-the-spot answer. That's my approach too. Yeah. yeah, I would rather it not be staged. You know what I mean? I think that's more so fake than a true conversation. But back to that. So, uh, what is the most important trait that makes my personality? Um, you know, I would probably have to say, um, I really don't know if I could give you a number one because I, I feel that a personality is a mass sum of the most important traits you have. You know what I mean? You don't just have one trait that, that makes you who you are. It, uh -huh. it's, you know what I mean? Um, well, let's start with that if you, if you don't mind, sure, like, no, like yeah. what do you think defines the personality? Um, like your persona, you absolutely, your persona. So the the definition of persona is essentially a, a lump sum of all your traits. Um, and I 100% believe that that makes up the personality. A lot of times people will, will say persona with like a falsification, like, oh, he's got a, you know, egotistical persona. You, uh -huh. you know what I mean? But that's kind of incorrect context. Like, um yeah, I, I sorry, I forgot the question that you. No, you're all good. Uh, like, what defines personality? Oh, okay. Like, so, broadly speaking. Yeah, yeah, your persona. I kind of okay. milked that one a little bit. So but. you think like persona, like how you uh, like to portray yourself to other people? Yeah, or? absolutely. And and I think it's not of like how you like to portray it. I think it's a subconscious 
um, way that you do portray yourself. You know what I mean? Because, mm. like, you can choose to portray yourself as this or this, but, like, ultimately speaking, there, if you're not being real with the person, there's there's a sense of that in daily encounter. You know what I mean? Like, okay. you are who you are, and it, you can hide it all you want, but it's not, that's not really something you can do your whole life. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm going too deep into that topic there, but I... I'm a deep thinker, and that's, I don't know, that's kind of something I've thought about, what separates a persona versus a personality. That is, yeah, that's kind of wild to think about. Yeah, because, you know, not, a lot of people say the word persona and don't entirely know the definition and or context it's used in, or even, like, what it represents, you know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. It's even more relevant today, like, everybody presenting themselves on social media. Absolutely. Presenting Absolutely. themselves in person. And, you know... To touch off that, social media, me and a good friend of mine were having a uh, conversation the other night, and I, I never really thought about it this way, but he put it into a perspective <clears throat> that it's just, you know, when people say these things or upload these pictures, it, it's selective. It's not you all the time. Like, you know what I mean? No mm-hmm. one's catching you off guard. It's you're choosing what is put on and when it's put on, mm-hmm. and it's almost as if you're you're falsifying the way you live or the... the actions you do you know what i mean that's extremely and I, mean, I do it yeah. like i don't post something on instagram unless it's like you know an event i went to a, a country i've traveled something like that etc and uh it's like a highlight reel yeah exactly that's a great way to put it exactly a highlight reel and i yeah i don't know i never thought about it like that i feel like i feel like there's nothing wrong with that like why why would you want to present yourself at like a bad point or yeah, no, if you're I a agree. female if you're like looking shitty or something like that like i, I get that but i feel like Culturally, we need to like kind of uh, open our eyes and like minds to the idea that maybe not accept that as like fact of who somebody is, which I think sure. I think people are like pretty awake to that idea too. It's not like oh okay they present themselves this way, maybe it's caught my interest or it's like a limit or kind of reduce some like uncertainty I may hold about that person or at least how they want to be portrayed on who how they define themselves, like sure. creating that persona. But it's also important to take in consideration, like, I, I don't know, like, I've, I, oh, I, did, I had a tweet one time, and I, I do kind of believe this, like, some of the people that have the most Instagram followers and are, like, the most, like, relevant on social media, they resemble a robot, like, the closest <laughs> to a robot in person, right? Like, have you ever met somebody that's, like, they're, they just, like, if you look at their Instagram or uh, look at their <laughs> social media or something, it's like, wow, this person looks really cool, it looks like they have a really exciting life, or... Their exciting life probably resulted in having a really cool personality, and then you get to know them and you kind of talk to them. It's like that person's kind of boring. <laughs> that's be like super judgmental of that, but no, like I, I know what you're saying, and yeah. I, I think that's what my friend was saying as well in in similar context. And not to say you know not to uh, <clears throat> accept or deny that statement, but it just with, the, with with an open mind, it really just kind of made me think about social media. You know what I mean? Not that I've changed the ways I present myself on social media because. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It hasn't made that much of an impact, but I thought it was a very interesting outlook on social media itself. That's kind of wild to think about. Yeah, I agree. That's yeah, that's really weird to think about. To portray that, uh... yeah, yeah. I, I had a thought going off of that. I feel like <laughs> I keep like putting the thoughts in the back of my head and then kind of forgetting about them. Today. No, that's okay. You, I mean, you said it yourself. We would probably touch on three topics and it would span the entire podcast. So, True. Uh, True. Here we are. We've made it through one. Yeah. Oh, this is the question I was okay. going to pose. So, do you think culturally we are since like, since this whole social media thing, it's so new to us and, sure. and we don't we're kind of like guinea pig generation of it. So, we're kind of like learning how to use it, kind of like testing new theories and whatnot. But clearly this, like, persona you present yourself as, it's very valued. It's valued to anybody who doesn't know you. It's valued to even your friends a little bit. Maybe your, like, social status, if you choose to care about that. Like, even job opportunities. Sure. So do you think culturally we're putting too much thought into developing that persona instead of developing the personality? Because you could argue that's even more rewarded nowadays. You know, that's a very... That's a very interesting question there. I really don't... I don't know how I would answer that, to be honest. I, I would say that... Um, I would say maybe that social media itself leads you to work on the way you are presented wow. rather than the way you actually are, more so. Mm. And I think that kind of goes 
along with the question that you just asked. But um, you know, I really, I, I don't know. If, if personally, if I feel like I can't give an educated answer, I'd rather not say anything at all. So I really don't know what I would say on that. Okay, that's a great okay. question. You've well, that's a, that's a good question. If it's it gonna, is, yeah, it it's is. gonna make You're you be like, yeah, that. I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like it's almost like not super gender specific, but I feel like women are kind of like their persona is kind of valued more because they're going to get more male attention as a result of having like a an awesome Instagram or something. Versus like men, they're going to get more female attention if they have like a a desirable personality or something. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Um, that's human nature. That's it. Truly is. You know what I mean? Like subliminally, we we do these things for the attention of the desired sex we chase you know what i mean um that's funny that you say that and with with all that going into it we create our own norms with like these new platforms and yeah we choose to value females more that's why they get more likes (laughs) sure yeah absolutely i mean that's true i've never thought about that you put that into perspective for me I wonder if girls get more confident from that, or they get more like I would hope so dependent on that on that gratification. If they're not getting that like dopamine rush constantly, then they're like fuck. I would hope that it boosts their confidence because it should. I mean, you know, truly, if you're if you're putting if you're selectively putting things onto social media that you want people to see and people are giving you positive feedback, that's a win win. You know. That's a good point. I, yeah. I would hope it boosts confidence. They just go to their likes. Like, he thinks I'm hot. He thinks I'm hot. He thinks I'm hot. <laughs> I'd be lying if I said I didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> true. true. So, we all do it. We're yeah, guys. We're, we're guys. We're humans, man. True. True. Rolls. Hit that double tap. It's easy. Yep, it is. <laughs> but uh, going back to, like, the concept of self, I guess, so I guess it's, like, kind of your personality, at least how it's, like, generally speaking, viewed – is like a collection of like maybe your past memories, uh, the knowledge you have, the skills you have, um, experiences, the people in your life, and collectively we can almost like throw all those things together and then choose what we like value and what we don't value and uh, kind of uh, throw it all in like a melting pot almost and then that becomes your sense of identity and your... your um, subjectively created concept of self absolutely i think that is absolutely the case that's Um, that's kind of weird it is and when someone says personality in my mind it breaks down to persona and when when you say persona it breaks down even further to the traits you possess and possess and when i say that it breaks down even further to like okay where did you get these you know what i mean like who taught you this knowledge what experiences shaped the way that you view this you know what i mean because you could talk to someone and uh, it, it's hard for some people to do, but when they say something that's just totally out of left field that, that you totally don't agree with, most people would choose to rebuttal or, or negate their statement. Rather, you should, like, in my opinion, I try to do this with people. I try to look at them and, and, and subliminally almost pick out that, pick out as a poor term, pick apart that... Um, outlook. You know what I mean? It's just So you're saying like if they throw out an opinion then some people are so quick to be like like uh reject it and yeah, kinda of exactly. push it away. Exactly. It it makes me curious. It truly does. Mm. It it triggers my curiosity, it really does. It makes me wonder why they think that or where that came from. Because I mean you don't just like wake up one day and I'm racist. Like, you know, that's not how that works. Like I have a family friend, and I wouldn't call her a friend, but she's a racist, and every time I talk to her, it, it's truly just, it's saddening. It's like, you know, why do you, why do you feel this way? Like, you, you've never had any negative encounters. You can never tell me a reason that, that you despise a race in a whole, you know what I mean? Like, that's just truly ignoring um, principles of love. I mean, you, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's human nature to love, and if you're not, there's something that is hindering that nature mm. and it makes me very curious as to what it is I guess is a better way absolutely to and it, there could be a multitude of like variables too exactly well. exactly like they're probably uh, once you kind of get that understanding that they were maybe like grew up in a racist household and then they were culturally conditioned to like oh I see black people I hate them like and, yeah. you start to pity them it's not it even is, like you it like is. it's not like you're fighting that hate with hate it's like Wow, like you, you're limiting yourself to this entire race of our species just because 
because you were raised in the household that taught you to hate them. Like, and it is. It's, it's like, damn, I feel sorry for exactly, you. Exactly. I know some exactly. cool black people, some <laughs> cool Hispanics, whatever. You know? Yeah, absolutely, man. It's it's uh, it's one of those things where it's just it's, it's almost too ignorant of an argument to even think to rebuttal. You know what I mean? It's just almost like, okay, you you think that way, but in reality, I, I pity you. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, no uh, animosity between me and that person, but I, I know people of different race that may hold animosity for someone like that. But personally, me, you know, and, and I know people of, of different color that despise white people. And it's just like, you know, I, w- I wish you knew me. I- I'm a great person, and I-, I could probably change your views on that, but it's okay. Mm-hmm. You-, you hold the beliefs that you believe, and that's that. True. So... It's so easy to associate, like, people, oh, this person looks like this person, therefore I, f- I find them more appealing to hang out with. Or, it's all judgment, man. It, or it's vice versa. I hate them because they look like this person. Exactly. And it, it's sad that our society works that way, but it does. Yeah, and some people. Yeah. It's not an no, individual. It, right. it sucks 100%. that there are people, there are players in this system that are walking amongst us that think that way. Absolutely. And, you know, it, yeah, I, I agree. It's almost as if we do it subconsciously, too. Like, if I said I didn't do it, I'd be lying. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, okay, so look at it this way. The first time you make a friend, what makes you go and talk to them? You know what I mean? What what about their makeup makes you approach them first? You know what I mean? Mm. It's just like, that's subconscious, too. Like, you don't think about that, and you don't do it, and it's not wrong of anyone to do that because that's just, that's nature, like I said, but... I don't know. It's it's just kind of interesting. It really is. Yeah, they they say that like uh, you like people that are like you and people that you want to be like. So it's exactly it's kind of interesting thing. I I always wonder that that same topic. So typically speaking, depending on like how open minded you are, how curious you are about like the like the unfamiliar or like the uncertain. So typically speaking, I feel like most people are going to seek out like people that look familiar. So it's like oh, I have a friend that looked like them or. Whatever, or they, they seem similar to that person. Therefore, it's they're probably more accepting to like approach them, or right. or if they were be approached and like say what's up to them. So um, and in the end, that that truly is you know that is a judgment. It, it maybe it's not a negative one or a positive one. It's just a perception you receive of them and you interpret it in your own way and then you initiate. You know what I mean? It's, absolutely. And that's truly a judgment, it, whether it be good or bad. It's just it's very strange. I, I, Which is why, like, just stay open-minded. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I'm, I try to be that way. You know, no one's perfect, and no one can have the perfect outlook. And if you say you do, you're ignorant. But I, I think being open-minded and just being respective of of humans as as very um, unique individuals, every single one of us. You know what I mean, like. If I see you doing something that I would consider weird, like, I, I would never label that, or I would never, like, call that out, you know what I mean? I would never associate that action that you just did with being weird, because I don't know where that comes from, you know what I mean? I don't know why you do that, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like Exactly. It's almost as if, I, I don't know, it's almost as if you judge in, in everyday things that you do, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Sorry, go it's on. really on limiting. No, no, you're cool. It's a really limiting way to view the world. Excuse me. It's a very limiting way to view the world. Yeah. And going back, like, loop back to what you were saying earlier. That's really interesting. Uh, that whenever, whenever people throw out these ideas that are like unfamiliar to you, you don't just like immediately reject them. Right. You're like, you take them, you take them with an open mind, and you're like, okay, like, I've I've never heard this before. Like, what do I think about that? And you kind of like ponder that thought a little bit. Instead of like, that's so limiting to automatically reject what somebody says just because whatever your reasoning is, even if it sounds crazy. It's sad. It is. I yeah, you know I've had some people. This is kind of off topic, but like I said, I'm a religious man. I've had some people to come to me and ask me, you know, like I worked with this guy and and we we became decently good friends, and he was in a dark spot in life, and he would just asked me, he'd be like, tell me about Jesus, man, and, and I would, and I would tell him, and I'd just, you know, we would we would talk about that for the longest time, and then I'd be like, well, what do you believe? Tell me about what you believe, you know what I mean? Like, even though I may hold the truth that my religion is the only one standing, 
that means nothing. You know what I mean? Like, if you have something to say, tell me. Like, tell me about it. I want to hear it. And he he believed that humanity came from a radioactive tar pit, and you know we were created from dark matter. And it's just like, you know, that's out there. But I, I would never judge you because of that statement. Because in all seriousness, if you're saying something like that to me, in all seriousness, I have no option but to respect that. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. that's that sounds kind of out there and hippie-ish, but it's true, man. I mean, you know what I mean? Just like you said, you don't know where that stuff comes from. Yeah, exactly. It's, I think it's important the dude's actually like pondering that thought. It's like, yo, yeah. where do we come from? Yeah. Like, yeah, do I any agree. of us really know? Like, I feel like a lot of it's like hypothetical, but we don't know what the fuck we came from. <laughs> yeah. We're just, and, and if you like close yourself off to uh, that, or, or let's say you like, you have your own concept of where we came from. Especially like an ambiguous question like that that people are gonna be like, I don't know. Yeah. Then you uh, you having that concrete belief is going to like raise the likelihood that you're just gonna reject everything else. Right. And um, like you're you're I just think it's important to like have opinions, but have those opinions be kind of loose and be be willing to have those opinion opinions challenged or beliefs challenged. And it's important to have a value system, like, don't get me wrong, but to keep these opinions and beliefs held, but not held too tightly and with an open mind. So that maybe, maybe you, maybe it comes down to just like an approach on how to like take on a task. It's like, oh, this is the best way I found personally. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is my personal experience, therefore it's limited. Right. So you come along and tell me this way. And they're different ways, and maybe maybe it's uh, maybe your way is a little bit quicker or whatever. And if I'm gonna just close that off, you're just limiting yourself. No, yeah, you're completely limiting yourself. I would agree. I uh, <clears throat> I would agree that it's very important to to have beliefs yet allow them to be challenged and, and allow them to be altered if you choose to do so. And uh, you know if. If you're doing that and you're allowing those beliefs you have to be challenged, you know, almost on the daily basis, and you're still believing what is true, then it, you know what I mean? Like, that should be impactful for you. Mm. But I think it is very important to to have that open mind and to have that constructive criticism, if you will. Um, so you can, in essence, you know, find out what you truly stick to and what you truly believe, and you know what I mean. And that's consider all viewpoints. Absolutely, absolutely. That's just, that's been the under. Wait, wait, wait my bad. But no, I should say it's it's very close minded to to you know disregard something else, someone, something else that someone has said to you solely because that you believe it is not true. I, I feel that it's very important for you as an individual to to almost crawl through the scenario you know what I mean and, and consider it carefully and, and allow it to have an effect on your outlook if that be the case you know what I mean for for someone to say something to me immediate, immediately just be like no you're stupid like whatever you know what I mean mm -hmm. like that's that's disrespectful but not only that that's that's limiting like you were saying it's it's limiting to to the mind it, it truly is yeah yeah so like whenever you ask you get asked the question Oh, where do we come for, from? You could be like, yo, honestly, I don't know exactly where we came from. This is the best idea I've ever heard. I've also heard we came from a radioactive tar pit. Like, <laughs> sure. I've, I've heard all these things. I don't know, though, at the end sure. of the day. Sure. I feel like there's, like, great strength in admitting your own ignorance. Absolutely. Because then you open yourself up to, like, a whole world of possibilities. And it, it truly, admitting your own ignorance truly allows you to accept others for who they are. Because if you can accept your faults and your incorrectness, if you will, then it, it makes you look at someone else and do the absolute same. You know what I mean? Because if you can do it to yourself, you know, in the end, you are you. And that that is the most important being to you is you. Mm -hmm. And so if you can look at someone else and, and disregard that, I, or I'm sorry, I, I got that backwards. If if you can do that to yourself, I, I feel that it absolutely allows you to look at someone else and do that in, in confidence. So, it, it, like, admit your own ignorance to yourself? Yeah. And then admit that, yeah, yeah, because you can you apply that same logic to, absolutely. like, the, the racism. It's like, oh, like, they're, I don't know, they're 
closing themselves off or they're ignorant to certain things. Not to just ride them off, but take into consideration, like, if you deem something to be a flaw, it's like, oh, like, I, I forgive them. It's, it's yeah, all absolutely. good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mean, I get that. A lot of that comes from my beliefs as an individual. Just, you know, forgiveness. Live with love. I mean, I mean, we're all in the same spot. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. we may be in different parts of life, but we're the same being. We come from the same species. We... We're, we have the same organs, we, we have central nervous system, we have brains, and, and they all operate on similar wavelengths, you know what I mean? It's not just... Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that everyone isn't unique, because we absolutely are, and that's what I think... Um, well, I won't get into that, but I think that if, if you can truly look at someone and judge them for their appearance, you are wrong. Or a lot of other elements, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah, not just appearance. Maybe not their flaws in their personality were because of their upbringing sure. or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah, that that really does make sense. It kind of kind of all ties back around to the, it does. It does. the concept of self. Yeah, it's true. But you, it, honestly, like I was I was thinking about it, and like the the whole collection of like who you are and like how you define yourself and how you define. Um, I mean, how you define yourself and then maybe, like, your perception of me is probably not going to be the same as my perception of myself because sure. we have different viewpoints and vice versa. Absolutely. Which is kind of weird to think about because, like, I feel like in, within every relationship, not even necessarily, like, like an intimate, like, dating yeah. relationship, just, like, any relationship, like, sure. you and me being friends, like, you have a perception of me, I have a perception of you, and we have perceptions of ourselves and I, I don't know. I feel they like probably don't coincide. Not at all. And, and that's the beauty. I mean, that that truly is. You know, I feel what like I mean? you can't take those too seriously either. No, you're like like your own perception of yourself or your your perception of that other person. It's like people get caught up on how they're perceived, and, and it'll really damage a person. You know what I mean? It, you just gotta live life as who you truly believe you are, and you, <laughs> I guess it all comes back to being true to yourself. You know, my parents have told me that my whole life, and I never applied it. And here I am applying it. <laughs> it's, it's funny because it's true. You know what I mean? What do you think that means? Be who you are. Be who you are. Who you want to be, man. Like it, it's not who you want to be, but if you subconsciously strive to be like someone, like per se, m my father. He he was a huge role model in my life growing up, and I never, you know, I mean maybe as a kid, like oh I want to be like my dad, but ultimately subconsciously you strive for that. You know what I mean? Like. My version of success is probably different of your version of sex success solely because of of my the knowledge I was provided with as a child on that topic. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's it's just like whether you choose to be like someone or not, if if they truly make an impact in your life, I believe that subconsciously it shapes who you are. And I, I think a lot of who you are is from your encounters, your your relationships, you know, not on an intimate level either, like you were saying, mm -hmm. but just in general, I, I think it's a very, I think who you are is a very complex thing, and we kind of disregard it as, oh, who you want to be, you know, like, when I, when you asked me that, my first answer was who you want to be, and I, and I took that back, because that's incorrect, you uh -huh. could, you could want to be someone else, but that's, you know, that's not who you are, I don't know, that's a complex thought. It's very, it is really complex. It goes deeper than that. You know I feel I mean? like I feel like the concept of self is extremely elusive in the aspect that it's like there's there's no way to define it because it comes down to who you are right now is not who you were five years ago, exactly. and exactly. that's not who you're going to be in five years. Sure, and that that's just constantly changing, like moment to moment. I mean, it, it's small changes, obviously, probably not even recognizable, and there there might be, be like elements of yourself that are very consistent throughout so your if, life. What if those elements? You know, I was just thinking that same thing before you just said that, like mm -hmm. in my head. And what if those elements are who you really are? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you have those elements that have stayed consistent your entire life, never changed, is it fair to say that that's who you really are? You know what I mean? I, right, I don't yeah. Know. That's a good point. That's a good is, point. Is that a fair statement to make? I or truly it, don't know. Is it like just not, not necessarily a coincidence, or is it just like you never came to a point of reflection or a point in life where you thought it was necessary to change that? Sure. Or maybe just your biological like makeup kind of uh, 
kind of pushed you in that direction. Right. Because I, I bet, like, for both of us, they're, like, even to this point in time, like, since, not birth, but as, like, a little kid, like, like my mom always said I was really stubborn and, like, doing what I wanted to do. <laughs> sure. And I feel like I'm still kind of that way, you know? Yeah, absolutely. But, no, like, absolutely. like how, how my stubbornness is defined, let's say, like... Let's put it on like a scale kind of deal. Sure. So like, let's say when I was a kid, I was like 80% stubborn. Yeah. But like now, I still consider myself by my own standards stubborn. But I like maybe it just cranked down to like 50%. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah I know. What you're so saying. is that really the same thing? Is that personality trait really the same thing? You know, that's a good question. And I don't want to just give you a halfway answer, like I said. So to be honest, I don't think I could answer that. That's a good question. I feel like it's, uh, I don't know, I just feel like all these things, whether they be in your control, out of your control, uh, like I was saying before, like your your past memories, your past traumas even, your, um, your habits, your thoughts, your opinions, your beliefs, your just anything you hold close to yourself, it comes down to like almost the personal choice on how much like value you want to give those things and maybe where you derive your confidence from sure and i don't know it just to me it doesn't make sense how those things could be who we truly are like in essence like i feel like there's you if you want to say like the spiritual side or whatever like it just that argument or that logic kind of like implies that we are more than this but the question is like what are we then or who are we? Especially if that thing is constantly changing moment to moment, day by day, and just um, it's just constantly changing. I would say probably um, I, I this hadn't come to mind. I don't know why. This is a pretty um, amateur thought, but I would probably say your morals. You know, because it's true. Like, what will you do for this? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What what won't you do for this? You know what I mean? And that okay. that truly. Now that I'm looking at it, that absolutely makes up your daily decisions. However, I don't know, like I said, that if that's fair to say that that's who you are either. You know what I mean? I truly don't know. Um, I, I would say morals has a lot to do with it, though. Okay. Because, okay. you know, your whole life you, you grow up and, oh, don't steal from the cookie jar, and you never do it. Well, you, you know, 20 years down the road, you have the option... Or the decision, if you will, to, to steal something greater, to, to steal money, to steal belongings, to steal someone's life. And you know what I mean? It's still kind of that simple principle. It's, I didn't do it then, why would I do it now? You know what I mean? Then other variables go into that. It's like, Absolutely. oh, maybe you're financially desperate at the time. Maybe you're you, gotta, right. maybe you right. have two kids that you got to provide for and you're not working. Or You're right, man. It's <laughs> So you have to throw those morals out of the way. This is too. a complex conversation. It's like an like ethical dilemma in life. And like that's like... This challenge over here just got way higher consequences than like stealing from the cookie jar. Sure, but you know, I guess then again that breaks down to morals. Like, let let's say, okay, let's say you know, eh, I don't want to give a scenario. I would rather not talk that. I would rather talk theoretical. Um, so say it's like. Okay, I'm in this situation, and I need it this bad. Am I willing to do it? You know what I mean? Am I willing to steal? Am I willing to break my morals because I need it this bad? It's almost necessary for my survival, but am I willing to go against what I've been taught my entire life? You know what I mean? Mm. And that's, you know, it's one of those things where you couldn't say yes or no because we're not in that position, but it makes you wonder, doesn't it? Yeah, it yeah. Makes you think. And then it's so easy to like justify it to yourself, and yeah. maybe even sit, like do like break that moral, but in your head justify it to yourself that it's like okay, right now in this scenario, it's fine to break that because of this. Yeah, that makes sense. Which is which is wild to think about. This uh, yeah, this is wild. We could we could go all day about this. <laughs> um, let's let's talk metaphysics. We're we're right on the border of it. Oh, are shit. you are you familiar with metaphysics? I no. No. So, physics is the study of movement, almost. I, I, you know, I'm not an expert in that realm. I've taken physics and stuff like that. It's the study of movement and whatnot, but meta is a Greek term for after. Um, metaphysics, after physics. So, 
th this comes down to th the governing laws by which we live, wh which is exactly what I was saying. You know, human nature is love. Well, there's a universal law of love, and it states that human nature is to love. And I if you're doing anything other than that, it's it's a self construct. It it's a makeup that you've created. Mm. The metaphysics is is kind of. I don't want to get into that topic more so. I would rather talk universal laws. Um, but that's closely what it is. It's the governing of of life that we don't know. You know what I mean? Okay. So are you familiar with the, the universal law of correspondence? No, I think I have it written down here, though. So, yeah, okay, this, this, yeah. that's actually one of the laws of the hierarchy. Um, hierarchy as in universal laws hierarchy. But... Uh, so it's basically... There are seven of those, you said? I think, approximately. Okay. I, I don't know that entirely, but I, approximately, I'd say. Okay. Um, the correspondence. So so this is theorized that the internal state of your existence directly reflects the external state of your existence. So if you're struggling inside and you have a lot of conflict going on internally, then your day-to-day -day life is going to be stressors and, and um, antagonists. And, and you know what I mean? It, it's, it's based on the manifestation of energy in which, like, you can believe that you are a piece of shit person and you, excuse my language, you can believe that, that you're doing wrong in life and it, it universally corresponds to where you end up do doing bad. You, that energy is so focused in one central location that it becomes true. You know what I mean? Okay. You put so much thought into the fact that that is the case that it becomes the case. And it's... Not a lot of people are familiar with that, but... Um, are you familiar with the book Dante's Inferno? No, no, I'm not. So it's it's kind of that way. It's very cool. It's... um, I haven't read the whole thing because it's, it's called The Divine Comedy. And it's a series of books. But Dante's Inferno is one of them. And I've, I've briefly read it, but it's hard to read. It's... You know, Latin terms and stuff like that. No one oh, wow. keeps up with that entirely. But it's basically like um, they believe that there is, uh, I forget who writes it, but he's a philosopher from the 1500s, I think, or early or late 1400s. But it's basically saying that there's three levels in life, and internally you always are in one of these states. And it's purgatory, hell, and paradise. And so purgatory is. There's actually a movie that exemplifies this perfectly, and it's called um, As Seen Above, So Below. If you, if you haven't seen that, I would yeah, absolutely I seen that. recommend it. Yeah, I'll put it down. It's a little more intense than the theory itself, but um, it absolutely represents it and does a good job of exemplifying the book, Dante's Inferno. But so basically, purgatory is the state of what can go wrong will go wrong but it will not negatively affect you it's kind of a hard thing to say and like understand if you're unfamiliar with the term but it's like you could be wanting to go up but you will always go down but you will not be harmed and that's kind of a strange concept but it's like I'll, I'll just stop there and <coughs> Wait, so you, wait, repeat that again? So it's it's like if you want something to go this way, and it's going this way, but it's not really damaging your daily life. You know what I mean? It's just kind of purgatory is the state of, like, not wanting things to go the way that they're going. You know what I mean? You want them to go good, but they're going bad, but it's not, like, a day ruiner. You know what I so mean? So is it kind of, it, it talks about things going not how you desire them to come. But not entirely destructive. But So it almost comes down to the conscious choice that, okay, this is not ideal, this is what I want, but I'm not going to let it like mess with me mentally. I suppose that you could say that. I've never thought about that, but I, yeah, I suppose. So like, it's almost, it, all, it almost comes down to the, the response of those external things being undesirable, not even necessarily like negative, but like undesirable. And then your response to that is still optimism. Yeah, I mean, in, in essence, yeah. Okay. And so the next stage that he addresses is is hell, and that's not the contextual hell that many are are spiritually related to. And maybe it is. I, I'm a spiritual man, but I haven't thought about it in that context. I've thought about it interpersonally. Okay. And uh, 
it's it's basically the theory that what can go wrong will go wrong and it will be destructive. So it's like it's exactly that. What you were saying with another applied um, step, if you will, that that is destructive, that is negative. You know what I mean? And then there's a third stage called paradise, and that is, yet again, I guess it could be tied to theology, but I was thinking interpersonal. Um, it's basically what you want to go right will go right, and it will be successful. It will be... Um, I'm thinking. I'm trying to think of the term. It will be will be beneficial to your person or in, endeavors. You know what I mean. Uh huh. So it's that's a very interesting thing because that ties directly back into the um, you know universal law of correspondence, and that's entirely not what that is. Like the the law of correspondence doesn't say that there's a hell, purgatory, and paradise. But it's almost as if, like, if you are struggling internally and you're not optimistic about the things that is going on, it, it will be that hell state. You will be going downhill and it will be destructive. You know what I mean? And that, that goes right back into energy manifestation. If, if you think something does exist, then it does exist. If you think something that is good is going to happen or bound to happen, then it does happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, there's so many people, like, I, I guess you could use Michael Jordan per se. Maybe this is a poor example, but... You know, he got cut from college, and that was his dream was basketball. Did he really? Yeah, he he didn't make the college team or not. I know it was high school. High for school. Sure. That's what it was. High school. Okay. Sorry, I, I apologize. Um, Still wild. Still yeah. wild. But no, exactly. It's it's that persistence. Like, I would call that a state of purgatory. You're you're in the dumps, but you're optimistic that it's going to happen. And he's arguably the greatest NBA player of all time. You know right, what I mean? Right. The greatest player to ever hold a basketball in his hand. And. At one time, he was told he wasn't good enough. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's just kind of a weird thing to conceptualize and apply to daily life. And it's almost hard to do. It really is. It seems like a really empowering thought, too. It is. It is. Like, it, it comes down to your own choice. And, like, how... And I could be interpreting this, like, incorrectly, but, like, just how, how you respond. Because worst-case scenario, if you allow yourself... You can allow yourself to get to all three of those states... But the empowering thought of that is that things can go good or bad, which is also empowering because you can define how you how what good and what bad is mm -hmm. to yourself, like subjectively. So I mean, some like bad to you might be good to somebody else. You sure. know, it's very relative. So that's empowering in itself, but it's also empowering because it's like you can consciously choose to never let yourself go to a state of hell. Like, the worst case yeah. scenario, you can go to purgatory. I would agree. Which is, that's really, really cool to think about. I would agree with that. And, and I suppose, you know, I, I not to get into a religious tangent, but I, I suppose that, that could be tied directly to theology and, and the beliefs of, of um, a God. And, and I do believe that there's a God, and I believe that Jesus Christ is a God, but that you know that ties directly into that. Um, you, you know you you believe this, like you may be down in the dumps, but if you hold true to what to what you believe, then there's there's no possibility of you ever going to hell per se or being down in the dumps and yet being destructive. You know what I mean? No. Uh -huh. And that's maybe that's an unfamiliar example, but I don't know. It made sense at the time of me saying it. Right. Right. <laughs> Or you just set the intention or the belief, like you were saying, like with a, like yo, I'm I'm just not gonna let myself go to that place. Exactly. I'm not exactly. gonna let myself exactly. go to that place. Like exactly. it, honestly, a really relevant example in my personal life is like, I I went through like I I definitely in uh, college have struggled with like points of depression, and right. um, even had like like thoughts of like self harm and whatnot, and. There came a point oh, in. I'm sorry to hear that. By the way, yeah, it's it sucks. It's like it, I'm happy I went through it, especially being in this state of mind, so that I can better empathize with somebody else who's in that place. And it's really fucking common because it's a really vulnerable position to be in, and you don't want to tell like anybody. You don't want to tell somebody like, like yeah, I'm depressed about this. Sure. It's like it, you just you don't you don't want to talk about that to because no. it makes you look weak. It makes you look like so. It's this whole like negative rut that. You don't want to exemplify the strength of opening up and being like, hey, I'm in a dark place right now. So then you keep it more reserved and it's this like negative spiral. 
But with that being said, the example of my personal life is, uh, so I, I was in that place and had been in that place and a good friend of mine that like knew, I kind of, um, I guess you could, you could say like, like emotional swings or whatever, he, he kind of identified it for me and this is exactly what I think it was, is that I was playing the, not all the time, not all the time, but there were points in time where I would allow myself internally to go to states of hell and sometimes like the the it wasn't even that bad of like like what was going on in my life like externally wasn't even that bad but I would allow myself to get to that dark place internally just because I was playing the self victim card and so I don't even know if he would know this but so long story short I uh had a really good conversation with him and he got real with me he's like honestly man he's like quit quit with like the uh, let's make a commitment right here let's make like a promise to each other and let's just quit playing the victim card let's quit playing like poor me poor me poor me and um, I don't know ever since that day like it, it's almost like a whole new reality has been opened to me because again, it's not like I spent like a ton of time, like like I was always there, but I would easily allow myself to go to that dark, that hell, sure. to allow myself to go to hell and go to that dark place. And ever since I made the commitment, which is so weird psychologically, because like making the commitment to myself, as much as I love and care about myself, obviously, it, it, didn't have as much value in that promise because I made that promise, whether they know it or not, to a, a friend that I love. So it's like, oh, I need to hold myself to a higher standard with like not allowing myself to become the victim. Why? Is it because I love myself? Yes. But it's also because I made that commitment to another person, which is really fucking weird and powerful <laughs> to think about. It's like, like... You're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for them now. I mean. Yeah. Which, in result, it's like I want to do it for myself, but the stronger point of motivation, especially if I, like, get to that point, if I get to, like, that point where I can see myself going down that route and I consciously identify that and I'm aware of that, then I can, before, it'd be like, oh, it's just me. But now I can be like, hey, stop it, bitch. Stop <laughs> it. Calm down right there. And then I'll be like, hey, you promised that friend that you're not going to go down that place. And ultimately, that's going to negatively impact them, too, if I'm, like, moping around sure, all sure. sad, you know? Sure. And, I, you know, I, I've had those encounters, and I've, I've had those friends that are, are truly just... When I say destructive, I don't mean, in reality, like, destroying their life. I mean, very applicable, so, yes, in my scenario. But I, I mean, like internally, who they are is being truly destroyed, and mm. it's it's sad. I, I have friends that have gone through that, and uh, you know, some of those very close to me, and it's 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 almost like you said, it's harmful to them more so than it is you. Like there was a point in my life where I was losing sleep at night because I knew that this person was destructive, and I knew that that who they are, or who they used to be, or the person I grew up knowing, was no longer in existence. They allowed that to fall off, and, and it was. It was truly hindering my day-to-day -day life, and and I don't know. it was it, like who they were, at least how you perceive them, as being masked. It's like yeah. being masked by this this terrible monster of depression. Exactly. exactly, exactly. I wonder, and and I don't know if this is like still occurring or not, but I wonder if you can apply that same psychology that kind of got me out of that dark place to be like, next time, so say like this happens again, and like you know they're in that dark place. And to be like, dude, honestly, like I've lost sleep over this. Like I'm, I'm really concerned for you. Like I'm, like, could you just, I, I almost like get real with them and be like, yo, could you cut this out for me? <laughs> well, you know, that's that's the sad thing is that I have done that. I I have said that. You know what I mean? I've been saying that for some time. It's it's the point where I was just like, look, bro, like what you are doing to yourself is not only affecting you. It is to the point where it is truly obscuring my daily life. I can't wake up in the morning without without thinking, like, you know, what if my friend dies tomorrow? You know mm. what I mean? Because, I don't know, man. And, and that sounds drastic. And if he ever hears this, he knew, he'll know exactly who he is and who I'm talking about. But I, I won't say any names or anything, you know, of course. But it's just like, 
I don't know. I, I, I've said that, and it, it just bounces off. It, it's still, I don't know. I don't know. I guess the comfort in that thought is that it's probably not like old. It's like depression is so complex that it's not like one size fits all, you know. Like this is the antidote for Jordan, so therefore it works for you too, homie. Sorry, I got Very cool. You cool. Strange text message. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah, I, I know. It, it's I would agree. It's a truly brutalizing thing. I, I hate depression, man. It's, it's a monster that. It's a monster that people let overtake them. And it's bad. You know, I, I, we've all been there. We all have our demons that we battle, and you know, it just comes down to being strong enough to pull yourself out of it because no one no one can do it for you you know what i mean like maybe maybe your friend saying that encouraged you but ultimately you did that you know exactly. what i mean absolutely and, and it's just hard well said well said he didn't he didn't save me i saved me but absolutely. his encouragement is exactly what got me there absolutely yeah well said it's powerful it's it is powerful. it is it's it's depression is a sad thing i hate to see it suffering is real absolutely. very real and you know i try to live a very positive life, a very optimistic life, and, and I feel like, as a religious man, yet again, I'm, I'm sorry if that sounds redundant to you, but it, it's just, I feel that my duty on this earth is to try to truly spread that love and positivity that that should be human nature, you know what I mean? Because reality's dark, man, this world is brutal. <laughs> it is a hard place to grow up in, and it's a hard place to, to thrive in, it truly is, but... I feel like it's one of those things where if, if you can, you know, it's the little things. Like, if you can shed the slightest amount of positivity on someone, they might realize that there's hope for the situation that they're in. And it may come out of them. Like, just like your friend, you know? That that optimism and positivity is probably absolutely what brought you out of your poor state in life. And it's just, it's important that I think we make a duty of it to just reflect light on people. Absolutely. I, tr I truly think that. Just make a, like you have more power than you think as far as Absolutely. like making a positive impact on others' days and you, you really do and it's all like a ripple effect. Maybe you positively make them smile when they were like having a bad day. Yeah. That could, and that results in them treating somebody else better because they go home in a better mood or. You know, I, <laughs> it's kind of weird that I'm recalling this because I, I, it hadn't crossed my mind probably since it happened but I had a friend, um, I, I, you know, I wouldn't even call the kid a friend, but, but I will because of what he approached me with. At the time, solely an acquaintance, you know. Um, there was just a day um, back in high school, and I recall he was probably having a rough day, and I just kind of made buddies with him and, you know, talked to him, and he, he later let me know that he was... Prior to conversing with me, he was truly thinking about killing himself tonight, and uh, I was just like, "Wow!" Like, if I made like you know, you after I, the fact or before after after okay. the fact, you know, we we had been friends more so, and I, I don't talk to the kid anymore, and that's okay because I think he's he's fine, and he there's a, it's a mutual thing when he sees me and I see him, we know that we're friends, and it doesn't have to be like I talk to him on the daily basis. You know what I mean? It's it's one of those things where, like, I, I know that I brought you out of a dark place because you told me that, and for that, I am forever grateful for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, and it was just, it was so impactful to me, man. That probably was one of the most life-changing experiences was for someone to tell you that they did not kill themselves because of the slightest thing you